This video is uh, going to show some of uh, my repairs on this guitar. It's a Martin D35. It's a 1971 model. It belongs to uh, Owen Saunders. You may be able to see on this little clip that the uh, binding is cracked uh, on several places. Some of it's missing on the one section of it. Here's a picture of Owen's uncle named Potter Brown. He was the original owner of this guitar. Owen brought this guitar to me to uh, mainly to get the binding repaired on it or replaced. As happens with these older guitars, uh, we ended up doing a lot of repairs besides replacing the binding on it. The following uh, video clips and pictures are condensed down considerably. I made a lot of video footage of these repairs, but in the process of uh, editing, we tried to take it down to where it's a manageable file where people can watch it and not have to feel like they're watching Gone with the Wind. We've taken the uh, tuners off this thing and knocked the nut off of it. Taking this binding off. That neck's pretty straight right there. Of course, there's no tension on it. That, that's the, the unknown in this situation is how much the neck is going to move. I'll show you this uh, sorting gun. It's been modified. To, you cut it in two, and I got a little, little groove cut in there. And that holds it on the fret real well but that gap between there makes it get hotter it'll heat up right quick I mean doesn't take much at all All right, here we are, still working on this old D35. This is a little silicon heating blanket that I got from LMI years ago. And we're going to heat up this uh, fingerboard and remove it, hopefully without tearing up anything. All right, it's been a few minutes now, and uh, we've given this fingerboard time to heat up. Soften this glue up. And I'm working this little pallet knife in here underneath it, between the, between the top and the fingerboard.
All right. And it came off pretty clean. Now I've got the, uh, put this heating blanket back on this uh, neck after the fingerboard was removed. And I'm going to try to bring the heat up to the point that uh, this uh, truss rod can be removed. And I've got a little uh, piece of plastic here, material. And I hope you can see that coming out of there, but it's coming up out of there just like I want it to. Need a little more leverage here on it. And there it is, removed partly. And I got this little homemade tool that I made several years ago. Uh, I call it a saddle router, but it's a it's something that's good for cleaning out the bottom of a slot. Need to adjust it a little bit more. It's not down hardly enough. It's a highly technical tool. You have to hit it with a screwdriver or something. Well, it's been uh, a while. I cleaned out this uh, slot, got it cleaned out as clean as I knew how to do. I extended the slot about a half inch forward and made room back here for the adjusting thing. Now the later Martins, they put a great big old block in here and reinforced that. The early ones that I saw when they first put the adjustable truss rod in it were done like this. And uh, so anyhow, uh, you got an Allen wrench to uh, tighten it with, and I ground a, a little bit off the end of it, uh, made it not so wide, so it, you could get it up in there from the through the sound hole and adjust that truss rod and make sure everything's going to fit. Well after I got that uh, slot cleaned out in the neck and uh, extended to where I could put the adjustable rod in it and uh, was satisfied that it would fit. I said I was going to uh, take the bow out of this neck and I, I still tend to do that but I'm on a wait until I get the neck out of it. And here's my little homemade jig that I've used for quite a few years. Copied it after one I'd seen for sale, but it's worked good for me. Uh, it puts pressure on the on the neck in the places you need to and protects the, the body. But I got a new tool that I've never used before and I'm going to try it out on this thing and it's still in the in the box, Amazon box that I, it came in so I'm going to get that thing out and uh, and see if I can't use it. Uh, these, I got two of these cutters. They're made for cutting uh, foam styrofoam or whatever you call the foam that they're made to use on. Uh, I bought this thing because I saw uh, 
Mr. Woodford using one on the on his website. He's a he's got a, a not his website is his YouTube channel. He's got a good YouTube channel and he he knows what he's Well that thing's generate some heat now, there ain't no question about that. It's starting to wiggle. There it is. Stuck paper down in there. Got a little thin shim in there, but they got a little paper in there too. Cut a couple of uh, little shims to fill in the space. This rod is narrower than the uh, rod that came out of it. And we're going to glue this thing in here. We're using fish glue. Now it's the next day. This glue's dry and I'm working with a scraper here to scrape these two little filler I put in here down. Mr. Frank Ford gave me this idea. It's just an old plane body, in plane, but it's straight. And I got some 80 grit paper on here. That's about as much as I'm going to try to take off of it. I, I helped it quite a bit, but it's not perfectly true, but it's it's really close. And uh, I think what's left there can be corrected with the uh, the rod that I'm putting in there. That's the reason we're putting it in there to take that bow out. Here we got the uh, fingerboard clamped up on its side and I'm very carefully trying to clean the, the glue off of this thing where the binding was glued on. We're, uh, we're measuring the thickness of this binding that came off this thing. It's about 60, this piece is about 62 3,000. This one's about 59,000. I'm going to go ahead and scrape this stuff down level with the bottom and the top. Well, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to scrape that down. I'm going to turn this off right now. But I get it cleaned down a little bit further. I'll, I'll flip it back on and let you see what the finished product looks like. Well, we spent a good bit of time working on this. And we've got the binding down where it should be. I might have said before that uh, I drilled a couple little holes in these uh, fret slots before I took this fingerboard off. and. Uh, they're about a sixteenth of an inch or so. I don't know what. It doesn't matter. But I got these two alignment pins that I can line this fingerboard back up with. Here's the fingerboard, the bottom of it. We're going to spread a little of this fish glue out on it. There's no 
don't even go on past that right there because that other part glues to the top of the body. We're going to put these dots in this fingerboard, these position dots. We're working on this uh, fingerboard. Got a couple of places here that uh, were uh, dug out from fingernails through the years. A couple of deep places, uh, several others, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to fill these two worst ones. And I've already ran some, run. I've already run some uh, super glue in there and put some that ebony dust in the in those things. I took a knife and made little marks down in the indention. And I've got the super glue in here, it's thin CA. We'll let that dry a little while and we'll uh, come back and sand that down. Those are going in there about like they should. Now I'm not going to waste the time that it's going to take to put all these frets in here. I'm not going to waste filming it because there's four of them. And these others up through here are going to be just like that one. Well, we've got a, a little uh, excessive chip out on this uh, ebony fingerboard. Ebony is really bad to chip out on you in spite of everything you do. I've got some of this. Uh, this was actually, excuse me, this was actually some... Uh, those cookie cooking sheets, silicon, and they measure about. Uh, let's see what they measure. They measure about twenty thousandths of an inch. If you can see that, and uh, they're good to put down in the fret slot to keep the CA glue from going down in the slot, and I'll. Uh, I'll Dip a little bit of uh, CA glue down in there and a little bit of ebony dust and try to camouflage those places a little bit. All right, we're going to sand this down here where we put this. CA glue, trying to fill some of these chips up. I'm about to do something that I learned from Frank Ford. Keep bringing up Frank's name, but I uh, feel like I've got a lot of education from French.com and from 
meeting him in person. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to run a little of this CA glue down alongside this fret. This kind of is a little insurance to keep those things from popping up. And I've seen different people use different stuff to do this with. Um, some of them put glue in the fret before they put it in there. But this has worked very well. Now I just wipe off as that much of the excess as I can. Before it dries here. And you just keep a bottle of acetone and a coarse rag handy. And before that has a chance to dry very much, you come along and clean that off. And I've got a little tool here that I made just for this purpose. And I come alongside there and use that to clean off a little of the excess. Well, there's the fingerboard after I've uh, sealed it with CA glue and uh, it's got a little final polishing and cleaning up to do but uh, that's pretty well got it. Now I got to, to smooth the ends down and and uh, file the tops off the frets and crown them and polish them. And I'll review what I've done. We started out with this safe edge file and we filed the sides of it down and then we Work with some 220 and some 400 sandpaper. And we're just mainly trying to get these frets filed down even with the side. We'll work on them a little bit more as we go along with the fret job. We're going to darken the tops of these frets. The magic marker. Got a little bit down here on this end that we need to work with. Well, I'm covering this fingerboard with some electrical tape <clears throat> so I can work on these frets. And smooth them down and crown them. I used to use uh, masking tape on this, but I figured out a while back that this electrical tape is a whole lot tougher and it uh, stays on better when you hit it with a, some sandpaper or whatever. So. That's what I'm using. It's plain old electrical tape. All right, we got the fingerboard covered up. And this is a safe edge file. I've ground on it myself and took the sharp edges off of it, rounded the end of it off. This is some chalk, and this helps to get the cut, and uh, so 
So what we're doing now is putting the roundosity on it, as, uh, as uh, Roy Underhill used to say. Roundosity. We filed the top down flat. And uh, we want these frets to be rounded. I'm going to hit the ends of them just a little bit. And uh, like Frank Ford taught me, I was able to watch Frank in 2000 in Nashville. Watch Frank uh, refret a Martin guitar. Learned a whole lot from watching him, so. Frank said, forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Frank said that what you do to one fret, you do to the rest of them. I think I said 22 frets. I think these have just got 20. 14 and 6, yeah. I don't know what I was thinking about a banjo, I guess. This is a little uh, tool I bought. It's a diamond. Uh, got diamonds on it. Uh, kind of a off brand. I bought it at a tool store that used to be around here. It had some kind of Chinese tools, but uh, I put this handle on several of them. This is the 360 grid, I think. But I'm going to do the same thing with, uh, with this thing as I did with that file. Except this is a little bit finer. Okay. The next step that I do, this is some 400 grit wet or dry paper. And uh, this is a piece of art gum or a eraser or whatever. It's kind of funky looking, but it's just what I need. It's, it's flexible a little bit. And what I do is I use this to polish this with. It's flexible enough to get down in that corner of that fret down where it meets the fingerboard and I found it to do a, a real good job and we're going to work on the ends just a little bit too That's pretty well polished right there. So that's what we're going to do. You guessed it, the 20 of them. And I'm going to use some 1500 grit. Now, this will be the last, last polishing right here. Now we're going to take the tape off. I still got to uh, work on the ends of these frets. They're pretty good. But there's one other little thing that I like to do that makes them feel better and I think it makes them look better too. Here's a little tool that I like to use came from Stuart McDonald. It's a real fine file and it's got safe edges on the on one side's flat and the other side's rounded. But uh, when you uh, when you're working on these frets the corners will be sharp. And I like to take this little old tool and 
and just work on the corners. And it just makes them feel so much better. Alright, now another thing I do is to uh, round over this sharp edge on the edge of the fingerboard. And I use just a single edge razor blade for that. Try to make these things feel like a, an old guitar that's been played a lot. You know how they you get a hold of an old guitar that's been around a while and all the edges are rounded over and it feels comfortable. The old fingerboard's kind of rough, got some chipped out places in it. But I think that's about all I'm going to do to it. I didn't film my taking the finish off this neck. I'm going to finish everything but the top of the peg head. Here's the uh, neck after I applied a little bit of uh, stain and filler to it. Here's the neck after I've sprayed some finish on it. Uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, to make this neck look like it did originally. Here's a shot of uh, this neck after I got through buffing and polishing on it. Now it's, the finish has just been on there one day so it'll dry and telescope and so forth but uh, compared to what we had and it came in here I don't think Owen's going to be too disappointed. Now we're going to reinstall these old Grover tuners and we greased them up real good. They still got a little grease on them but we're going to wipe it off the best we can. Well, I think you've seen enough of this. I'll turn this off. Here's a shot of the uh, of this neck. <coughs> After I polished it and uh, sanded it and buffed it. Turn it over here. Get a shot of the peg head and here's my little jig that I made a few years back to uh, hold a guitar while I'm checking the set of the neck. It's got a clamp here that clamps it, pulls it backward, and I've got a clamp that pulls it downward. Got a little call on the bottom of it to kind of level up the uh, clamp. And uh, the proper way to check it is to uh, slide a straight edge. I've got this little piece that I made that's got a slot in it where I can check it. And the proper way to check it is to slide this straight edge down here and see where it comes out on the bridge. And you can see that it lacks just a little bit going up on top of it. So we need a little bit more set. Well, here's my little homemade jig that I made to, uh, to 
cut the recut the neck angle. 2000 April 8, 2009 is the date I've got on it. But uh, it's pretty simple. It's just got an adjustable. It's got a hinge here and an adjustment down here, and that makes this changes this neck angle. And uh, I can adjust the the sideways set of the neck by moving these stops over one way or the other. Now what I try to do is line this thing up in a manner where it's it's uh, about the same on on every side. I want this uh, straight edge to be level with the, that neck right there. Now these little stops down here they control the sideways set of this neck. We get those adjusted, then we pretty well know we've got the neck in there. Right now, that's that's level right there on that side, and it's level right there on that side. Now, I'm gonna tighten these neck clamps down a little bit. Well, that thing will stay stable. I'm tighten all these screws down here to hold the neck in place in this plane. That's my air compressor coming on. Which happens, especially when you're video making. All right. Now you may not be able to see that. You can't. You're just going to, have to take my word for it. But we got this this adjustment here, right? This one here is right. This one here is right. Now we want to take a little bit off the bottom side of this. Whoever worked on this before has already cut, undercut this side a little bit. So we don't have to do much of that. What you do, you undercut it. And the very outside edge is the only thing you've got to worry about. <laughs> All right, now we tighten that stuff up. Let's see if it changes anything. Still right here. Still right there. Still right there. Now. What we need to do is to come up. I'm going to loosen this uh, this nut here. I'm going to go half a turn. And then we're going to tighten the bottom of it. Might have gone a little too far. Uh, 
You don't want to. You don't want to take off too much. You get in trouble like that. All right, that's just a. That's just a little bit. Little bit where you're going to take it off. Now, we're going to use this chisel. All right, now here we go from the top down. Just taking a little slice off here. sandpaper on this and uh, I'm sure that works mighty well but this is the way I've uh, done it for quite a while and it's always worked pretty well for me so I'm just going to stick with it You see, I got a wide enough chisel that this flat piece of HMW or whatever it is keeps the uh, keeps everything on plane. I know I'm in front of the camera, but. And what we've done, we've done is we've accurately removed a little bit of wood. Uh, any of you who have fooled with this kind of thing will know that uh, it doesn't take much change here to really make a big difference. On the neck angle. Now I'm gonna run this sandpaper across here a little bit. Eighty grit sandpaper, what it is. All right, we got a little different camera angle now. Uh, I move this thing around a little. We got it back in the in this other jig. Sliding the straight edge over here, and it just clears the top of that bridge, and that's what we're shooting for. All right, we got some carbon paper here, and uh, we've put the neck down in there with this carbon paper on it. And uh, it shows us where it's hitting on both sides. You can see that. Now, I won't attempt to show you all this, but uh, that's the process that we're going through. We'll keep taking a little off of it until it goes down in there where it suits me. All right, I got the glue cleaned off. And... Uh, We're going to let this dry overnight. Think it'll be all right. Here are some pictures of the final product. It was a uh, pretty long procedure. And editing all this video was a long procedure too. It's hard to uh, take as much video footage as I had and and edit it down 
in a manner where it uh, kind of makes sense. But I hope it's not too long for you to watch. And I hope Owen will be happy with his guitar. Thanks for watching our videos.